Hello, my name's Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. Welcome to YouTube Tuesday. Today I thought it would be great to get the jelly plate out again and use it with some dye-based inks. Also, I thought I'd get out my garden birds, my little tits and um, some lovely cherry blossom. So let's get started. Now, the first thing I want to do is set the scene and I'm going to do that with my um, cherry blossom and a black archival ink pad. Now what's interesting with the, the Clarity Cherry Blossom set, which I, um, which I drew myself, is that it, it's very, very versatile and you can create some beautiful background. Because it comes in three parts, and I'll show you what I mean now, this is the large element of the, three, the set of three. Um, because it comes in three parts, you can change the composition of the cherry blossom as you go along. So for example here, I'm using the same part twice to create tall branches or long branches. So this one is an extension of the previous one. Let me put my glasses on. And now I'm going to take the smaller element. There are two small parts. You can go to our website, you know, and find them. Now, this time, you see, I'm going to take this piece and just add it at the top, like so. So if we take a look at this, you see, this could be the top. Or you could turn it round. Let's turn it round. And it could be a tall card. And if you can imagine, there's the moon and here are the hills coming through. Or we can turn it round this way. Look, and this could be the bower and the hills could be in the background with trees. It's fascinating how it depends entirely which way you're looking at it. Now let's take it back to the way we planned and I'm going to use a small pair of blue tits or little birds, garden birds. Let's play it safe. Right. I'm going to add one here like so. And then I'm going to add his friend down here underneath like so. So now you see we've set the scene. Now the thing is, this needs to dry. So if you don't mind, I'm going to take um, one that I did earlier here, and I've already trimmed it back a little bit. So I'm just going to swap this out and put that there. One of the best things that we came up with at Clarity was masks. And you can see here, the blue tits come with a huge, beautiful bird as well. But what I'm interested in here is these little masks. So I want to cover up this bird. This is before we start playing with the jelly plate. We're setting the scene, if you like. So let's just pop that one on there like so. And let's take the other one. So you can use these masks again and again and again. Let's just pop that one in there like so too. Right, that'll do. And so we've done our base. And what we want to do now is just clear the decks and then I'll get the jelly plate out. Now this time I'm going to use the larger one, not the, not the huge one, but I'm going to use the uh, 8x10. And also our Mega Mount, which is fantastic for using in conjunction with the jelly plate. So I store my jelly plate in its original case, like so. Let's get it out. And, and then I'm going to lay it down on top of my, my Mega Mount, you see. And it's got lines on it so we can see exactly where it goes. This is really useful for when you're pulling prints. Would help if I could get it right. Here we are. Talk among yourselves for a minute while I sort this out. Da, 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 da. Right. This is very, very useful. As I was saying, because when you're pulling prints, you can line your card up or your print up with the piece underneath, which is uh, exactly the same size as the card that we, we um, also supply. And it's really cool because then when you do two or three or four layers, you can always pull the print in exactly the same place. 
makes sense. You know it does. Now, this time, though, I'm going to use a brayer and a pink distress uh, ink, worn lipstick. And what I want to do is just show you a really, really simple trick. So I want to turn the um, jelly plate round on its side and just take worn lipstick and let's just add some worn lipstick to this bottom part here. And then I need a little bit of copy paper. I think if I add the copy paper underneath, you may see more. There we are. That's better, isn't it? Right, and I'll put a piece of copy paper here too, so that I can rub off the, run off the excess. Right, so now let's just spread the pink across the base, like this, of the jelly plate. Okay, and if I've got some pink on that edge, if I want it to be seamless, there we go. We've got a lovely pink bleed now, and there's nothing up here. That's the plan. So what we want to do now is take our artwork, and rather than just put the artwork down and not really know where we're going with it, I'm going to lay the card down here and I'm going to turn the jelly plate over so I can see exactly where the pink is and where the white is. Do you see? And then I can just, I'm going to add a little bit more white to that area and a bit more pink to that area, like so. There we are. And then I shall press this down and you can see that the pink is being transferred. Very, very easy. Let's just burnish the back like that. What's fascinating is we think that there's nothing there because it's so, so translucent. But when you actually lift off your artwork, you'll be very surprised how pink and vibrant this is. And what's great is, you see, we were able to control um, at the top exactly how much uh, pink we let bleed in. So what we want to do next is leave that as it is and I'm just going to get rid of the pink on the brayer just a little bit and this time I'll change the colour and I'm going to go with old paper. So I'm going to just add a little bit of the old paper colour now to the base in the same area and I'll Again, I need to stand to do this. I'm going to just spread out my brownie colour, my old paper colour, as well. So I've done that. I know you can't see it very well. So what I'll do is I'll just put the white paper underneath. Not that you can see much better now. And then I'm going to screw up some paper. So I'm just going to crumple up the paper. And, uh, and then I'm going to distress this brown colour. Looks really nice. But you know, while we're on this subject, instead of using crumpled up paper, what we could use to pull out the ink off the jelly plate is a stamp. So if you had a big rose stamp, for example, or even the cherry blossom stamps themselves, you could stamp the cherry blossom, blot it. Stamp the cherry blossom, blot it. Instead of that, though, we're going to use screwed up paper. Go, go, oh, natural. And then we're just going to press that in there like so. And again, and just get rid of some of the ink with a piece of screwed up paper. And I know we can't see very well what we're doing, but believe you me, we're getting rid of it. There's loads of that colour on here. And now we'll take our, our picture again, our artwork, and we'll lay it down. And this is the wonderful thing about this Mega Mount, you see. It, tr it converts, if you like, the jelly plate into a huge stamp. So now I can see exactly where the colour is and I can lay that down on there like so and press. And instantly I'm transferring the, uh, the old paper colour over the top of that worn lipstick. So let's just 
blot this like so, clean the jelly plate a bit, and then let's just peel this off and see what we've got, shall we? Fantastic. Oh. Let's just enjoy that for a minute. And what's really nice is as well, if I just lift, lift this off and I'll put that to one side, jelly plate's done its job now. When we peel away our little masks, the birds really jump out, which is delightful. And we can put them back on their perch, on their home base, and use them the next time again. But you see how the birds have stayed beautiful, all ready for colouring in. And we've got this really nice sort of damask background, which I like a lot. So the next thing I want to do, let's stay with us. You ready for a bit longer? Let's, let's just colour in. Let's just add a little tiny bit of colour to this. Now, I'm in love at the moment with these Spectrum Noir pencils. So I'm going to just use these essential pencils, this tin. There are five altogether. I like, I like the essentials. This is a good starting place. So I'm going to use these polychromos, and I just want to colour in the birds and the, just to make them jump out a little bit. So I'll get started, and then when I get lost in here, you go and put the kettle on and give me five minutes to add some colour. So I think what we'll do is we'll add an undercoat first. Here we go. Because I actually, I'm going to colour them in a little bit pink, but I don't really have the right pink here, so I'm going to tone it down a little bit. And I think I'll just go with this pink here. There we are, let's just add a little bit of this pink. But I've already added a little bit of a, a cream undercoat, you see. So I'm just going to add a little bit of pink. There we go. And if it's not quite the pink I want, this is one of the wonderful things about these polychromos, I can tone the colour down beautifully. So I'm just going to spend five minutes now colouring in my, my garden birds and making them tone in with the background and you can go and put the kettle on if you like. I take mine white, no sugar. I'll see you in a minute. Right, all done with the colouring in. There's something very, very therapeutic about colouring in. I could do it for hours and hours and hours, and I do recommend those Spectrum Noir pencils. Now, let's just finish this piece of artwork. I've got a clever little uh, finishing trick, which you may have seen me do before. I just want to frame it, and the way I'm going to do that is with my Sharpie pen, my office marker, and my, uh, my ruler and a piece of paper towel. And then we'll do a background paper. So we're about five minutes away from completing. Let's just add a black line around the edge first. Let's just frame our work. So we're just going to expose as much of the artwork as we want to blacken, if you like. There we are. And always remember to wipe the ruler in between so that you don't deposit a length of black as you go round. There we go. 
let's just wipe this well so that we don't do that. Right, so we're just fourth side ready and then we'll go to the final stage. All done. Good job. Right, now, next thing, I'm going to get that jelly plate out again, you'll be pleased to hear. So let me just put this to one side. I don't know about you, it takes me about 10 minutes or 15 minutes to do a nice piece of artwork and then it takes me about an hour to find a matching piece of background paper. So I'm saying, let's make our own. And what we want to do is just, let's just clean the jelly plate. It should be fine though, right? Just a damp cloth or a baby wipe will do the job. And then I'm going to take my, my um, pink ink pad first and I shall just spread the pink across the whole jelly plate like so. Right. If you get lines when you do this, the chances are you're pressing too hard. So go lightly, although it doesn't really matter because it's a background piece of paper anyway. And then what I'm going to do is take a piece of copy paper. We don't need expensive paper for this. I'm just going to take a piece of copy paper. In fact, do you know what? It's always easier to take the jelly plate on your mega mount to the artwork. There we go. So we just do this, press down, and we're going to get a nice background pink. Easy does it. Okay, so we'll lift this off, burnish this. There we go. And we'll lift this off, and we've got a lovely pink piece. Well, we know that's going to match because we used the same pink in the, for, in the main picture, didn't we? So we'll put that to one side and then we'll take our old paper, exactly the same colour as we used before, and we'll add that to the background too. There we go. And we're going to create our matching background paper. Now the other thing that I wanted to mention at this point, let me just put this underneath so you can see what I'm doing. This would make fantastic envelopes, matching inserts, for example. Um, you know, if you, if you make cards to sell, when, when, you, when you make a matching insert or envelope, you can sure charge more. Now, let me just take my screwed up paper again that we used before, and I'm just going to distress this piece just as we did before, and it will make a great background. Here we go, that will do the job. And again, I'm going to take my, my pink now, lay that down, and I'm going to bring my distressed old paper look there, and press that down, and then we'll flip it over. It's ever so easy, really, but doesn't it look great when it's done? So we'll just do that, peel that off, and we've got ourselves a brilliant background. And when we lay this down on top, I think that looks pretty excellent. So we just need to cut this back, and, uh, and there we are. Quite a lovely card. I hope you like it. So th that's what we've done now. We've used dye based inks, we've distressed them on the jelly plate, we've mounted the jelly plate on a mega mount, and we've converted it into a huge stamp. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye bye now. <laughs>